One of the ways individuals can reduce the impact of aviation emissions is to buy carbon offsets every time they fly. Around $25 will offset the amount of carbon release per passenger during a London to New York round trip. But most people don't know how carbon offsets work or how to purchase them. Ten years ago, we set up to try and develop a mechanism for getting ordinary people to be able to do positive things about the climate that were measurable, that were deliverable and related to their own lives. So we set out to create a voluntary carbon market. Uh, a number of airlines now are offering voluntary offset schemes to their passengers where they say, if you want to offset the cost of the emissions that you personally will be responsible as one passenger on that aircraft, it will cost you an extra few pounds. But if you add that for all the passengers on the aircraft and use that to do something sensible like buying some uh, carbon reduction scheme somewhere else in the world, it has a real impact. The actual measurement is the least difficult of all of the issues. If you swap an incandescent light bulb for an energy efficient light bulb, you know exactly how much electricity you save and you know how much the grid emits in producing that and so you can do it. It's a simple sum. Much more difficult is making sure that what you're doing, first of all, is additional. This is the jargon, additionality. In other words, what you're doing is going above and beyond the existing policy, existing customs and practice. And the, the emissions aren't being counted by someone else. So, for example, if we do things in the UK, they will be counted by the UK government, which is not our objective. Our objective is to go above and beyond what the UK government is doing. The other piece that is quite difficult also is to ensure that we avoid leakage. Take, for example, avoided deforestation. Deforestation is a huge source of greenhouse gas emissions. But if you just put a fence around the forest and say, OK, guys, no more chopping the forest down anymore, without removing the source of demand, then all that happens is they go and chop a forest down somewhere else. So that is the other problem, which is dealing with leakage, dealing with projects where you don't get that kind of effect. Money from offsets is used to fund energy-saving projects in the developing world. These projects reap other benefits for the community, like employment and better health. There are two kinds of projects. There are those which have environmental benefits in terms of reduced emissions, such as a wind farm, but may not have any particular local benefit. At the other end of the scale, this is a good example of a piece of low technology intervention that we're using in Africa, in Uganda, in fact, which is why it's painted in the national colors of Uganda. This is an improved cook stove. It's not the world's most improved cook stove, but it's made locally using appropriate manufacturing techniques so that people can build them and repair them. What distinguishes this stove from many, from the stoves that people use at the moment, is that there is a ceramic liner in here which keeps the heat in, which reduces hugely the amount of fuel that you need in order to operate and cook your food. It's also got controlled air holes there, which make sure that enough air comes in to burn the fuel properly. A stove like this can reduce emissions and reduce fuel consumption by 40% or more. It's very simple. It doesn't obviously seem to be a solution to a global problem, but a quarter perhaps even a third of the world's population cook on very poor cook stoves, which cause blindness and respiratory illness as well as causing huge amounts of pollution. I speak to senior people in companies, I speak to ordinary audiences of, of employees. And when you explain to them the backstory, the issues behind climate change, they all come away thinking, Good Lord, is it really that bad? And if you could capture their intent at the moment they walk out of the room, we would have solved the problem. But they go back to their desk, and the same pile is in the in-tray, and the same problems face them at home, and within 24 hours they've moved on. This is such a big issue that people don't seem to be able to comprehend that it affects everything that they do, and that when they walk out of the room they should start behaving differently. It's making demands of people that are bigger than they can cope with. And somehow what we have to do is to ease that transition 
Don't face them with a cliff, face them with a gently ascending path that they can climb up. I would dearly love to see every airline operator required to either include offsets in the price or perhaps to offer them as an opt-out. In other words, you have to tick the box if you don't want it. We've got to start offsetting. We've got to do it today. It's easily doable today and there are plenty of opportunities to do it. You and I share one planet and we haven't got a spare one.